Your personal development matters the most from where you are right now. Bring your career into new heights with our affordable and quality in-demand virtual training programs designed just for you. Give your career a boost with a course or a training from Stellar Training Consultancy Services and join thousands of professionals from different walks of life in a learning and development session that fascinates you, motivates you, challenges you to learn new things that you'll use forever in a career you love. Find the right training for you today here at Stellar Training Consultancy Services, bringing excellence to professionals. Panalangin bago magsimula ang pagpupulong. Panginoong Hesus, sinabi mo, kung saan may dalawa o tatlong nagkakatipon sa ngalan ko, kapiling nila ako. Panginoon, inihahandog namin sa iyo ang pagpupulong na ito. Gabayan mo kami sa aming pagtatalakayan at tanglawan mo ng liwanag ng Espiritu Santo ang aming mga isip upang makita namin ang naaayon sa iyong kalooban. Basbasan mo ang mga gagawin naming pagkilos at patnubayan kami sa bawat hakbang. Nagtitiwala kami na magiging maayos at mabunga ang aming pagtitipong ito. Sapagkat narito ka sa aming piling. Amen. Thank you.
Good morning, good morning, good morning, Casteller. How's your morning, everyone? So uh, I actually have here like 12 participants and currently we have eight. All right, so to officially welcome you, let me go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Let me go ahead and officially welcome you. So welcome to Stellar Training Consultancy Services your partner in professional training services. So today we will uh, tackle HR 104, and that's going to be payroll benefits and compensation management. My name is uh, Janice, and I will be your resource speaker in this morning's webinar. So I hope we will have a pleasant and enjoyable time together discussing the topic. So is my audio on your end audible? Is it clear? Yes, according to Sir JM, according to our moderator, he said, yes, ma'am. Very good. So let me share my screen without further ado so that we can, yes, Paul from um, City Shireen G. Mangotara. All right. So let me share my screen and let me know if you can see my screen now. Is my screen visible? You can use the like button or you can... Uh, Yes, visible. Thank you so much. So, um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am Christine and ma'am Venice. Okay, great. Perfect. So today, like I mentioned earlier, we'll be discussing about payroll benefits and compensation. No, all of this are actually coming from the financials. So hoping that um, we will have a very meaningful as well as enjoyable discussion this morning. And I know that this, um, and I know that uh, this is a mix, mix uh, participants that I have right now. So this is, this is going to be fun. We will exchange, um, we will exchange ideas later on. Okay, so without further ado, let me first discuss with you guys the training rules. So training rules first is you have to turn your camera on for the first 20 minutes for the training attendance or for the training attendance purposes. So you can now start turning your cameras on so that I can see your beautiful faces right from where I am right now. So don't be shy. There. Wear proper clothing since the session will be recorded for quality and management purposes. Be attentive and be interactive during the discussion. And last but not the least, respect everyone. So we all have our own opinions as well as we all have our own ideas. So um, we all should respect it. So 20 minutes, first 20 minutes, you should turn your camera on for attendance purposes. Okay, so I only saw, yes. Hi, beautiful people of the Lord. Good morning, good morning. All right. See, I actually saw beautiful smiles. It's really nice seeing your faces, guys. Kasi unfair naman, no? Kapag ako lang yung nakikita nyo. Chucks. <laughs> okay, so the intended learning outcomes of this uh, morning's webinar are the ILOs. First, participants will be able to define payroll, benefits, and compensation and identify the importance of effective and efficient management of these in every organization. So participants will be able to learn three payroll options in the Philippines. And a third, participants will be able to assess the concept of compensation and be able to know how compensation is determined, the types of compensation and examples. So number four, participants will be able to examine Labor Code of the Philippines, book number three, Conditions of Employment. So we'll talk all, uh, a little bit about the labor code of the Philippines. And the number five participants will be able to identify taxation ro uh, rules in the Philippines for benefits. And number six, the last one, participants will be able to design and construct a unique employee benefit plans for the employees which are anchored to Philippines Social Security Law or, or the RA8282. So we actually have a lot to learn today. So that's going to be 
six of the intended learning outcomes that we have here stipulated for you guys. But don't worry, because you all have the opportunity as well as you have the freedom to share your experience and also provide ideas so that this discussion will be meaningful. Okay. So if given a chance, what other benefits would you like to see your organization providing? So other than the benefits that you have right now in your current organization or company, what are other benefits that you would like to, to see and would you like to, you know, to take from your current organization? You can type in your answers on the chat box and I actually saw one already. HMO. Mm, this is healthcare. Um, if I'm not mistaken, HMO is high. I'm not quite familiar with this, but yes, you may use your chat box microphone in interacting to me. So you can use your chat box at HMO from Sir JM. So HMO is actually one of the most common benefits that a company should provide. But according to Sir, um, that should be an interesting benefit that will be given from his or her current um, organizations. So HMO is kind of insurance, health maintenance organization. So probably in my organization, it's going to be a more um, applicable H HMO partner. So that's for me. How about the others? For Sir JM, he already has um, his entry. How about the rest? According to Sir, it's HMO. For the others, may it be housing and all those sorts, not all those sorts of benefits that the employer may extend to its or to his or her employees. So HMO is one. We'll see if others has other ideas of what other benefits that we as an employee can actually get from our current organization. So anyway, you can reserve that one later because I will be asking for a you know validation employee mental health. <laughs> employee mental health according to Mom Venus, which also applies according to our moderator here. I heard a company offering a one week leave for broken hearted folk. Oh, that's a very that's a very good benefit. You know, it's it's a very, very good um benefit that maybe all organizations will consider because broken hearted will lead to employees mental health uh probably disorder so that's actually nice why not suggest that one no uh <laughs> that's actually coming from our moderator <laughs> yes kasi kapag broken heart ka no ma maapektuhan talaga mm, just thinking about my co-employee earlier he was like not with himself because you know and then afterwards i saw him posting a picture of his girlfriend on social media so probably they're into an argument <laughs> so we'll reserve more of that more of your ideas later so let's start with the first topic that we have here that's going to be introduction to payroll compensation and benefits mm, for me before um before having really getting into you know deep meaning about the three no i i always thought that the payroll compensation and benefits are all in one but eventually i was able to determine their differences so what is payroll compensation and benefits so the meaning of payroll is that it is the list of employees of a company that is entitled to receive payments as well as other work benefits and the amounts that each should receive. So payroll, it's actually the list of employees. So basically, whether or not this employee is physically working or not, as long as that employee is included to, um, to the list of um, employees to, be, to, to receive an entitled amount of payment, so they are still in the payroll. So that's why I remember before when I was still connected with an LGU, they say that um, even that person is not working in the in the city hall, he is still part of the payroll. He is still part of the payroll of the mayor because he's still receiving salary. Mm. So that's actually one. Second, we have your compensation. Compensation refers to monetary payment 
given to an individual, which includes salary or wages, in addition to commission and any incentives or perks that come with the given employee's position. So um, the difference between payroll and compensation is, of course, first, it's, it's the spelling. And second, it's going to be the monetary part in the compensation part. It is to compensate um, the employee that's under the list of employees in payroll. So that's under compensation. Now, how about benefits? Benefits, it is something that promotes wellness to an employee in monetary or non-monetary form, which is given on top of the employee's compensation. So benefits, um, it's like an extra. May it be in the form of money or may it be in the form of something else like gift certificates and all that and other incentives. So this is on top of the compensation, on top of what the, the uh, employee is receiving in compensation with the services given as well. So these are actually um, the meaning of payroll compensation and benefits. We'll go deeper uh, as we go along with the topic now. So I will not, um, I will not provide examples, but later on, we'll provide examples along the way. Okay, ba? Because I know that you also have these type of backgrounds. All right. So importance of payroll compensation and benefits. So what are the what are the importance of, of, of the three? So basically, payroll, it ensures that pay is properly calculated, tracked, and doled out, and that the correct amounts of tax company benefits and other deductions are withheld. So basically the calculation of your net pay, gross and net pay is actually coming from payroll. So when you send out disputes because um, a certain, oh, we're actually streaming a live video streaming on Facebook. <laughs> All right. So, to ensure that you receive the correct amount of uh, pay, salary for that uh, for that cut off, you have to provide um, a dispute if there is to payroll to payroll department. So uh, they are the ones that will uh, you know calculate that will uh, properly um, take down or withheld your tax, company benefits, and other deductions. So basically, kapag kulang yung sweldo mo, sila yung, uh, sila yung unang, um, sila yung unang pupuntahan nyo for disputes. Second, we have your compensation. Use financial and non-monetary benefits to attract recruits. Re uh, recruits to reduce turnovers per performance and boost employee engagement. So this is in, um, this is in the compensation side. So when we when we see um, marketing ads on Facebook or any other social media outlets, no? They say that, um, join us now and you'll get this, for example, 15,000 pesos um, sign-up bonus, um, and then you'll get like 17,000 pesos um, basic pay and all other things that will really entice applicants and um and will really entice employee to, to perform. Additional compensation will be performance bonus, attendance bonus, and all other bonuses, you know, that's included in compensation. Next, we have your benefits. Provide support to employees' family, health, and financial future, which can help attract and retain top talent. One of which is um, benefits is actually one of the most common um, action plans just to retain employees as well as to reduce attrition. Why? Because with benefits, like we have made mention earlier, or like what I have made mention earlier, it's actually on top of the employee's compensation. So when we talk about benefits, no, kapag um, sinabi natin na, oh, we have this HMO from this company that's really very, you know, helpful in times of need. For example, um, emergency cases like hospitalization. So their HMO is really quite um, great and perfect for us because uh, one of which that the employee or that the applicant will look into is the HMO. 
kasi hindi natin alam kung ano ang uh, mangyayari sa atin in the future. And aside from that, if that company also has, you know, other benefits like probably housing uh, housing uh, benefits if you if you uh, if your seniority comes um 10 years and all that. And aside from that also um one of the benefits is probably um um early early retirement plan so that's actually one great benefit that you can give to your employee so um i don't know if there are employers here with us now um on your organization if you have that type of a benefit so that's actually one next we have here what are the three payroll options in the Philippines. So we are now talking about payroll, payroll options. So that's going to be in the Philippines. If you if you know more than three, then, then feel free to share it with us and use the chat box. Some companies are also offer free boarding or free travel cost. Yes, and that's actually a that's actually also a very great um, you know benefit, travel and boarding. Um, I hope that all companies will will realize that no, because not all of their employees live in the same area as to where the site is. So that's actually one great um one great benefit for a company to provide to its employee its employees. So free board and lodging as well as um free transport. <laughs> if ever you know if ever the employee chooses not to stay with a free board and lodging provided by the company. That's really great, you know. Yung money net pay mo is sayung sayo na. <laughs> okay, so going back, what are the three payroll options in the Philippines? We have first, remote. In a remote payroll situation, the parent company will add employees in the Philippines to the overall employees or overall payroll with employees in another country. So while this option can streamline payroll, the two sets of employees will be under different regulations so that's going to be the mother um the mother country as well as the country as to where the the payroll system's been generated or created so that's what we call remote second we have here internal if you operate a larger company that's committed to the philippines instituting an internal payroll may make sense for your daily operations so however this option requires a larger staff and budget so it, for example for large companies no of course they don't want to do it remote because there might be problems in the future that cannot be addressed directly and that if there are urgent matters that needs to be resolved when it comes to payroll concerns then of course internal type of payroll options will do them good why because automatically you can escalate your concerns your issues to the people within the area. Third, outsourcing. You can choose to work with a Philippines payroll processing company that will run your payroll for you and your company will still be held liable for all matters of compliance with this option. So uh, meaning to say they have to outsource. The company may be that, not that big or not that large that require internal payroll system. So that's why they do outsourcing. So for example, your, your, your company is in the Philippines and that payroll system should work, um, should work and should abide Philippines, um, you know, Philippines um, laws. So, but your, your payroll department is located anywhere outside Philippines. So that is what we call to outsource. All right. So Anything you want to add, guys, about the discussion? Maybe you have other payroll options also available in mind or you have ideas as to what type of payroll options you have in your organization. You can also share that one. You can use your chat box or our chat box as well as you can use your microphone. So don't be shy to share your ideas. I'm very much open to ideas. So next, we have your different types of compensation. So aside from the three types of payroll systems that we have here in the Philippines, we also have different types of compensations. So first, as compensation can take many forms, it is essential that workers understand how they are being compensated. So 
The different types of compensation that apply to them and the total value of their compensation package and the different types of compensation includes, but not limited to, salary, tips, incentive pay, hourly wages, stock options, other variable pay, sales commission, bonuses, benefits, non-monetary compensation that's, that includes recognition, females, etc. So for salary, it's going to be the thing that you, um, that you agreed on once you um, will be hired. So you have a, a, a sign up for that or, you, or you, you're already informed as to how much your salary will be. Tips, that's going to be aside from your salary. Tips, usually, when we talk about tips, no, what, what really comes into my mind are um, people, you know, receiving um, you know, tips as well as, um, you know, working in a, in a bar, a coffee shop. Um, also, cruise ships has this because um, their, their guests were also very much, you know, generous as well as hoteliers in hotels. You do receive tips. Restaurants, tips. Incentive pays. Incentive pay, this is actually depending upon the company. Probably they do provide attendance incentive, perfect attendance incentive, performance bonus incentive, and all other incentives. When we talk about incentive, no, talagang nagniningning ang ating mga mata kapag incentive. Hourly wages, as this is going to be computed after your basic salary has been computed, probably when you do overtime. So stock options, depending on stocks that you have, or um, you also have a share with the stocks um, because you probably is a contributor also for that company. So other variable pay, um, it's if it's a vague and a very a large, um, it's a very huge topic when you talk about other variable pay. Having no incentive is a deal breaker for all applicants. <laughs> correct, correct, sir. Um, Pag walang incentive, no? Um, pag, pag sabihan mo agad na um, once you do the orientation and that there will be no option for you to, to tackle or to involve incentive as a discussion, probably some applicants will just say, ah, okay, move on and apply to the other <laughs> and all that. So it's, re it's really, an, uh, you know, it's also one of the magnet why people choose us to stay in a company where there are a lot of incentives. Agree ba kayo, John? To, to, to our participants, do you agree that incentives actually one of the most common magnet why we stayed in a company? Do you agree with me? Type naman kayo, agree, John? Or oh, oh, super agree with hearts, according to our moderator. Yes, according to Sir J.M., Thank you so much, Sir JM. So, you know, when we talk about incentive, talagang nabubuhayan ang mga loob at mga mata natin. Kasi more incentives, more gala to come. <laughs> Next, we have here, sales commission. So, um, mostly, when I heard about sales commission, this, um, this applies to when you work in, for example, um, in a car company. Um, as well as when you are a, for example, you just nag, nag, nagbebenta kay ng condo, bahay, malaking mga commission noon, de ba? And of course, when you sell insurances, they also have sales commissions. So those were just the examples I myself uh, know and also has an experience too because my friends um, work in 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 uh, car companies as well as selling condos houses you know their 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 commissions are really are really big because of course the amount that they are also um getting to for the company is million million then so of course that's just but right for them to also get those types of uh, commissions so bonuses aside from incentives aside from other bonuses no bonuses that are um that are um, we got statutory ba yung tawag niyan? or um, it is by law to provide this type of bonuses no we have 13th month bonus and uh, and uh, everybody when december comes everybody's very excited to receive 
13th month bonuses. Aside from that, other companies um, provide 14th month bonuses. Statutory or regulatory. Yes, correct. Correct talaga ako. Statutory or regulatory bonuses. 13th month pay. So for 14th month pay, it's, it, it depends upon the company if they will provide that, no? Um, also, other companies provide... Um, uh, I'm not uh, quite really familiar with, with local government units, no? And I don't know if it's also applicable. But they have this type of bonuses that they will receive um, by the end of the year. So according to them, that is the remaining budget that they had for the entire year that was not spent um, because probably the project's already finished and all that. Uh, and other bonuses that our local government also has, um, um, they have this what they call also performance bonus, but on the other terms, uh, policemen also receive this. And also, they have um, they have what they call this clothing allowance. So no, it's, it's not bonuses because bonuses should be um, should be given, you know, with uh, with all other things. But they also have this uh, um, other other allowances, clothing allowance, meal allowance, and all other that. And that's going to be under benefits, maybe. <laughs> But yes, there are actually a lot of bonuses when you work in a government office. Uniform allowance as well. Yes, uniform and clothing allowance. Correct. Teachers receive that. Um, uh, there is this one bonus that I really, um, I was also able to benefit from before because my father was also a government uh, employee. And they receive this every December, and it's really, really huge. So that will help. Um, that will help the employee a lot. So benefits, like what we've mentioned earlier, it's going to be on top of the other salaries and bonuses that we have. So um, there are actually a lot. You know, when we talk about money, when we talk about bonuses and benefits, working in a in a government office, there are actually a lot. But also there are non-government um, companies that also has a lot of bonuses as well as a lot of benefits. So non-monetary compensation, that's going to be recognition. Part of their recognition is to give you a three-day, my father has wellness allowance every six months, which we use to buy gym equipment. It really makes us happy. Oh, that's great. That's great. Wellness allowance. Um gym equipment. So, yung bahay probably ng ating moderator ngayon ay isa ng gym. Meron na silang dumbbell, meron na silang ano, totoo. Oh, ang ganda niyan. Gandang company niyan. So, um, that's really great. And also, um, non-monetary compensation, like, for recognitionals, they provide maybe a, a free round trip ticket to Hong Kong plus three days and two nights accommodation. So that's actually one example of non-monetary compensation. Free meals, probably they'll give you like good for two, unlimited samgyupsal meal in a particular restaurant and all other um, all other non-monetary compensation like, you know, um, free one-hour massage. You know, you'll get a gift certificate for a one-hour massage good for two in a particular spa or beauty um, beauty allowance, beauty treatment allowance and all that. Saan may ganun, no? <laughs> pang, pang pariban by December. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's including already on the 13th month. So, I know that you guys also have other, other compensations and bonuses and benefits that you want to share. Don't hesitate to share that one on our chat box so that we can discuss and maybe your co-participants will suggest that um, with their employer. So next, we have your direct compensation versus indirect compensation. So what's the difference between the two? So direct compensation includes money paid to employees as cash, such as hourly wages, salaries, bonuses, and commission. Wages and salaries or gross pay typically fall under the category of base pay, whereas bonuses and commission falls under the category of variable pay. Ah, okay. So this is other var our variable pay. This is what they call other variable pay. 
yung mga bonuses, yung mga commissions. So it is where variable pay, um, it is where it falls, variable pay. But when we talk about salaries, wages, gross pay, it is under the base pay. So indirect compensation, but that too, no? the two bonuses, commissions, as well as basically um, we're in the direct compensation um, bracket. While the indirect compensation, what is considered indirect compensation can vary across organizations. So it differs from every from organization to organization. It typically includes much of the benefits package that comes with employment. So that's going to be discussed also upon your orientation, no? the benefits package that uh, such as employees, uh, employer sponsored health insurance and employer contributions to an employee's retirement plan. All right, so that's indirect compensation or probably your company or your organization has this, um, has this benefit wherein the firstborn of the employee is entitled for an educational plan. So something like that. So that's part of the indirect compensation. So not directly benefiting the employee. Next, how is compensation determined? So determining a position's compensation is not an easy task. There are many factors that need to be considered in order to present an enticing and fair rate to potential job candidates. So common factors companies use to determine compensation includes first, required experience and education level of position. So job title and responsibilities. So basically, if the job title and the, responsible, uh, and the responsibilities are just too heavy, of course, malaki-laki rin ang compensation yan. Malaki-laki rin ang sahod niyan. But if uh, for those entry-level job titles, so, you know, probably the... the the base pay is much lower than, of course, the more um, crucial and the more tasky job titles. So next, industry average pay of similar jobs. Of course, we have also comparison no, depending on industry. So um, LGUs, non-government, the non-government companies, BPOs, um, other, other companies or other industries, um, IT industries, Health industry, they do have different average pace. They do have different base pace. So job location and cost of living, of course. So this will also we we have um we have to take into con uh, consideration also the cost of living as well as the job location. In NCR, it's going to be a different. Um, there will be you know different computation when it comes to compensation. Different when we are here at Central Visayas, it's different. Um, you will actually see that one later. You know when we talk about the the. A basic pace for NCR and then here at the Central Visayas. So you have to take into consideration on that one. Um, not unless you are um, you are you know you are doing lateral transfers, transferring from uh, one position to another, but with the same with the same company, and probably that company is you know in Manila. You have companies from Manila. Companies here in the Negros Island, companies in uh, Cebu Island, Cebu City. So um, depending on your um, agreement with your employer, of course. Availability of qualified candidates. So basically, if um, the job that you want, the, if the position that you want to, to fill in is, you know, the, the candidates uh, on that particular job is like less, of course, the compensation you dapat taas taasan nyo, kasi the demand is very the demand is very high, but the supply <laughs> the supply of the candidates job candidates are very low. So law of supply and demand dapat you know pataas taasan nyo yung sweldo. So next we have company size and reputation. Of course, it will also uh, it will also consider now we will also consider the company size. Of course, kapag maliit lang yung company. Um, and it's really not that uh, uh, growing is of the moment as, and also the reputation is still new, then we have to consider also that one. So we have to really start from, you know, getting low. And then once nag-grow na tayo and then lumalaki na yung kompanya, of course, um, ROI also um, comes in. So yun, pwede na natin mag-salary increase. 
Any addition to the discussion or any addition to the, the items that's been discussed? Maybe you have something there in your organization that we can also add when it comes to determining compensation, common factors in companies determining its compensation. So you have any other, other things that you want to add and consider aside from this six here, required experience, job title. So by the way, required experience and educational level, no, this will also be considered. Why? Um, when you have a lot of experience, of course, hindi ka naman um, tatanggap ng ano lang, ng low pa ng previous job mo if you had. As well as, um, of course, experience yung pinag pinag pinag-uusapan natin. So experience really is the key. Marara maraming mararating yung experience mo if you will use that. So make use of that one. As well as educational level. So depending on your educational level. Um, I can give an example no, before when we had promotions as well as um, when we had hirings. Dapat tinitignan yung educational level kasi doon nila din nakuha kung paano i-rate, kung, kung magkano ang rate nito, yung ganyan. Any other, any other ideas as what needs to be included in determining com compensation for a company? Maybe for you, um, that will really work. So you can share that one on our chat box. Uh, don't hesitate to share that one. So here's the regional daily minimum wage rate as of March 2023. So without telling me your area, without telling me your region, kindly comment in our chat box your wage uh, minimum wage rate. So without telling me your uh, your region, without telling me you oh, are nasa NCRC Ma'am Venus. Just according to the chart that we have, ha, huh? nasa NCRC Ma'am Venus. So 429. Okay. So nasa siguro nasa region 11, sister. Or nasa region 6. No? Sister JM. How about the others? Without telling me your region, without telling me where you are, just based on the on the graph or just based on the table that we have here, the data that we have here from March 2023, what is your minimum wage rate? 570 also for Sir Raymond. Oh, NASA NCR. Hmm. 355 for Mom Christine, and that's going to be in probably Region 4A or Region 9. Region or in Caraga Region. So somewhere there. That's for Mom Christine. Guess lang yung sa akin, ha? Um, I, I don't really know if these regions are applying this um, minimum wage rates. But here in where I am, I can actually see that um, the people that I'm working with also receives above minimum pay of 387 to 435 because base pay as uh, base daily, daily pay for the people that is new hired here to where I am is 500 pesos. So there will be bonuses as well as increases every year. So that's just the basic pay as of now to where, to where I am. But I am not an NCR. So the others, how about the others? Baka na, na, baka na, baka na answer na ng iba, no? 429, 570, 570, 570. Oh, maraming nag-570 dito from Dr. Edward Perez. Hi, Doc. So 570, nasa NCR si Doc. <laughs> I guess lang yung sa akin, ah. So next, we have here. Labor Code of the Philippines, that's book three conditions of employment. So we're now jumping to the second topic. It's going to be Labor Code of the Philippines, book three conditions of employment. So Article 82, Chapter 1, that's going to be Chapter 1, Hours of Work. Um, Article 82 coverage, the provisions of this title shall apply to employees in all establishments and undertakings, whether to, for profit or not, but not to government employees, managerial employees, Field personnel members, members of the family, uh, members of the family of the employer who are dependent on him for support, domestic helpers, persons in the personal service of another, 
and workers who are paid results as determined by the Secretary of Labor in appropriate um, regulations. So basically the coverage of this provision um, apply to everyone, apply to employees in all establishments and undertakings. So basically if you are, um, if you are, you know, an employee and a government employee, so there are some, uh, you know, there are some limits as well for you when it comes to coverage, hours of, uh, hours of work, so number of hours of work. So in my organization right now, the only number of hours required for us to render is 45. So that's going to be five days a week because I work like nine hours in my current organization. So that's going to be nine hours and the only required hours is 45 hours. So more than that, it's going to be called overtime, not unless also it is um, it is necessary. So Article 84, hours work. So hours work shall include all time during which an employee is required to be on duty or to be at a prescribed workplace. And all time during which an employee is suffered or permitted to work. So rest periods of short duration during working hours shall be counted as hours work. Okay. So for example, if you work nine hours and you have one hour break. So um, eight hours is your number of hours work. But since you have one hour break, so that makes it nine. So basically, that is included in the um, working hours. It should be counted. So next, Article 86, and that's going to be night shift deferential. This one here also has a big impact. When we talk about night shift deferential, every employee shall be paid a night shift differential of not less than 10% of his regular wage for each hour of work performed between 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning. So some companies actually pay more than 10%. Um, it may range up to 20%. And, you know, it's really a huge amount already added to your payslip. So 20% of a regular wage for each hour. So meaning to say if you are like working for like 50 per hour or like 20, 20 pesos per hour or no, 200 pesos per hour. So 20% of that is calculated to be your night shift differential. And of course, it should fall from 10 p.m. up to uh, 6 in the morning. So that's how night shift differential is being calculated. So sa iba, mas gusto nilang mag graveyard shift, just like me, because of the night shift differential. Kasi malaki laki na rin siya pang, uh, pang add sa um, net pay or take home pay. So next we have your overtime work. Work may be performed beyond eight hours a day provided that the employee is paid for the overtime work. That's an additional compensation equivalent to his regular wage plus at least 25% thereof. So work performed beyond eight hours on a holiday or rest day shall be paid an additional compensation equivalent to the rate of the first eight hours on a holiday or rest day plus at least 30% thereof. So that's why people love working on holidays. Why? Because aside from getting at least 200% pay on that particular day, there, there are also other things um, like the 30% as well as the night shift differential, of course, um, will have its uh, percent when it comes to holiday pay. So that's why. But some companies have prorated holiday pay. For example, if the holiday falls on a Thursday and your Thursday shift will only like for two hours because day off ka nung Wednesday. Pag pasok mo ng Thursday, um, 10 p.m., so you only have like two more hours before the holiday ends, so yung two hours lang yung i-calculate for, for holiday pay. So there are actually employers like that. Um, so that's why when we talk about holiday pay at kapag ganyan yung mga employer na yan, mm, I might as well take my holiday off. Anyway, holiday, holiday, uh, the day on the holiday, I'm still paid for a day. So ganyan. Overtime work, so as much as possible, no? Um, 
work that exceeds the number of hours that you're supposed to be staying in the company. Of course, pag meron ka namang ginagawa na dapat na, naman na uh, pag-overtime man, pag wala namang uh, gagawin sa you know, pag-overtime mo, then huwag na lang. <laughs> your, your bosses will determine when to do overtime and of course, upon their approval as well. So payroll will uh, payroll department will compute that. So Article 94, and that's going to be right to holiday pay. Every worker shall be paid his regular daily wage during regular holidays, except in retail and service establishments, regularly employing less than 10 workers. So the employer may require an employee to work on any holiday, but such employee shall be paid a compensation equivalent to twice his regular rate. So these are the holidays that we have for the year 2023. Um, there are actually changes. Changes of the holidays, um, uh, it will change without prior notice. Kasi, you know, we have a lot of holidays this year and long weekends is actually a hit already. So, parang ganyan. So, according here, right to holiday pay. I, me I mentioned earlier, you know, that there are some employers that will prorate their holiday pay. So, it depends upon the agreement, actually. But I guess for local government units, automatically once their employer uh, once their employee comes to a holiday to, comes and work on a holiday they will pay double pay right to service incentive live so that's article 94 in every employee who has rendered at least one year of service shall be entitled to a yearly service incentive live of 5 days with pay now for this one this is also this also depends upon your employer if they have this, what they call service incentive leave. But it might as well, no, if wala pa kayong ganito, see if you can have this one suggested with your employer and see if it will work. Let me also write that one down so that I can suggest uh, on my end. So write the service incentive leave. This is really great. Service charges. So all service charges collected by hotels, restaurants, and similar establishments shall be distributed at the rate of 85% for all covered employees and 15% for management. So service charges, my 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 uh, my discount pala talaga, no? shall be distributed at the rate of 85%. So the share of the employees shall be equally distributed among them. In case the service charge is abolished, the share of the covered employees shall be considered integra integrated in their wages. So nilalagay yun sa sahod nila, no? For example, for restaurants, for establishments with um, with uh, this kind of uh, um, incentives and charges. So, pag my service charges na 100%, 15% yung sa management, 85% yung sa employees. So, ganun. So, next, before we jump off to taxation rules in the Philippines for benefits, do you have questions? of the labor code of the Philippines that we have just discussed. Maybe you want to add something. You can use our chat box. Hence, if you don't have any other addition to what, what have been discussed or what has been discussed, you can um, use the chat box and say next. Ah, para lang nagla live. Next. Oh, pamay naman, next. <laughs> okay. So do you have any questions? If you don't have any questions, you can type in next on the chat box. That is for me also to know that I am still with my participants in this morning's discussion. Um, are you still with me? Next, according to Ma'am Venice and Sir JM. Thank you so much. So Sir JM and Ma'am uh, Ma Venice are still with me as well as Ma'am Christine. Next, yes, and Ma'am Narisa. Okay, so let's proceed and go ahead with the next topic and that's gonna be taxation rules in the Philippines for benefits. Okay. So let's proceed with taxation. So Philippine taxation. Generally, the law considers fringe benefits taxable. The policy for this taxation exists in two categories. So rank and file employees pay the standard income tax rate on their fringe benefits, while managerial and supervisory employees pay a 32% fringe benefits tax. Uh, tax. So... Um, Tax exempt benefits. I'm very much. Um, I I really love this topic. No tax exemption benefits. Because I'm a shadow. Nang 
masyado na masakit kapag uh, pinag-uusapan natin ng tax because there are other people that's uh, um, that's giving out tax like 5,000, 5,000 per month, um, 10,000 per month, depending, of course, with their base pay, of, um, their gross pay. <laughs> depending on the pay that they receive, pag malaki ang pay, malaki ang tax. So while benefits can be taxed as generally stipulated in the Constitution, there are exemptions to the benefits tax uh, taxation. The following benefits are not taxable. Benefits exempt under special law, contributions to retirement, hospitalization, and insurance. So of course, hindi yan taxable, no? Benefits granted for the convenience of the employer. And last, de minimis benefits defined by the Secretary of Finance. So, um, pag yung payroll namin nun, nagsisend na ng com uh, computation of tax, as well as um, that, that that actually happens every um, every January. Kasi dun yung mga leave conversions, yung mga pag may sobra kang tax, dun yung ikinikredit. So, pinapakitaan talaga kami nung isang one whole page, page ng papel with the, with the taxes and all, computations of taxes. And then this word, de minimis, it's always, um, you know, ito yung pinaka uh, trending kasi ano yung de minimis? When I looked up in Google, the, uh, the de minimis meaning is of less importance. So basically, kahit less important yan, um, kasi less important yan, dapat hindi yan tinataksan. Um it's going to be defined by the Secretary of Finance. So hindi hindi tayo tayo lang yung nagsasabi, uy, di minimis yan. Di minimis. Dapat hindi taxable yan. So wala pa rin. Dapat ang mag-identify ng di minimis, uh, di minimis benefits ay eh, eh, yung Secretary of Finance. So you, you can ask, why is this included and why is this taxable? I, I, I actually had this in, uh, I categorized this one as de minimis. So, sasagutin ka ng taga payroll um, kasi approve yan ng Secretary of Finance na dapat kuhanan ng tax. Ah, okay. So, mga ganyan. So, examples of um, tax-exempt benefits that you want to include probably in the future, you know, we don't know. Um, the people that are, uh, you know, creating laws about taxes may hear us. So, what other things that you want to include to be exempted in taxes? Kindly share the, your answers on our chat box. Gusto niyo ba yung bonus hindi na matataksan? Gusto niyo ba yung, yung uh, allowance, uh, meal allowance, transport allowance hindi na mat matatax? Kasi sa amin, natatax. Yes, 100% according to Sir Raymond Bo. Um, dapat hindi tinatax yung ano no, yung bonus. <laughs> Kasi kapag malaking bonus, malaki din tax. So yan. So dapat um, they have to look, to look into this no na dapat yung bonus, yung 13th month bonus um prorated na nga. <laughs> Wag naman taxan. <laughs> Kaso my annualization si accounting. Oh yeah, Sir Raymond. <laughs> dapat um, dapat lahat no in uh dine declare don even the incentives uh, even the incentives guys yung mga yung mga like yung gc na ni, na, na re receive mo yung cash incentives because you 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 did something great and and um you were recognized and rewarded through cash yung iba gusto nila nga e, e, ano na lang e gift certificate para hindi daw matax yung mga ganun kasi but by the end of the year kina calculate yan Questions before I proceed? Pag walang question, diretso. Okay, so Republic Act 8282 or the Social Security Law. So the Philippines has a social security system that is a mandatory benefit to all employees. So in the country, payment of these mandatory benefits is a shared responsibility between the employer and employee. So dapat share yan. May share si employer, tapos may, may share si employee. Um, sometimes mas malaki pa yung share ng employee no? kaysa share ng employer. And sometimes also vice versa. Mas malaki yung share ng employer kaysa employee. 
So the Philippine social security system strengthened by the provisions of the Republic Act 19, uh, Republic Act 8282 or the social security law is the country's social insurance program and consists of the following bodies. So you have your SSS or social security system, HDMF or home development mutual fund, which is what we call pag-ibig, Phil Health, Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, so, pag uh, gusto mong may i-add ka talaga na beneficiary sa PhilHealth, no? One day process, andyan na agad. At ta tapos makaka-benefit na yung in mo na beneficiary sa yung PhilHealth. For HDMF, ito yung maganda, yung pag-ibig. Um, meron ba yung pag-ibig? Okay lang ba pag-ibig nyo, guys? <laughs> so, pag-ibig actually has a lot of things to offer. So, as SSS. So marami. Marami naka-benefit ng SSS, lalo na nung pandemic, no? Marami talaga. <laughs> so here, GSIS and Social Security System. So the SSS was created to provide private employees and their families protection against disabilities, sickness, old age, and death. Of course, kasi may makiklaim kayo. Um, disability benefit, sickness, not a sickness benefit. And then, pag mag-retire na kayo, meron din. As well as pag, uh, of course, hindi natin pinangarap na mamatay ka agad. <laughs> so, death benefit. Meron tayo niyan sa SSS. This is for the private employees. Whereas, if you are working in the government, the, we have your GSIS. The Government Service Insurance System is the equivalent system for Philippine government employees. So, for GSIS naman, may marami dyan. Maraming benefits din yung GSIS na yan. Marami din dyang loan. <laughs> Consolone. <laughs> That's going to be for um, local government officials or local government unit employees. So for SSS naman, meron tayong salary loan, educational loan, at marami pang loans. <laughs> so that's going to be under Republic Act 8282 Social Security Law. So next we have here for the pag-ibig, yung sinabi ko kanina, HDMF, is a provident saving system of supplying housing loans to private and Philippine government employees and to self-employed persons who elect to join the fund. So it's not just those people who are employed ha, can, uh, can join the Pagibig Fund or HDMF. Also for those who are self-employed. Our OFWs are also contributing Pagibig Funds. So even though they are not working here locally in the Philippines, but they also have these, um, they also have the, the, the opportunity to uh, join and have pag-ibig. So at least, may pag-ibig, may, may ano tayo, may chance tayo na pwedeng kumuha ng pag-ibig sa pag-ibig. Okay. So I'm not gonna elaborate. Next, we have here PhilHealth. PhilHealth is an administered by the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation and provides employees with a practical means of paying for adequate medical care in the Philippines. So, so PhilHealth, your partner in health. So that's Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. And aside from that, you have HMO from the company or from the organization you're working with. Meron din. Tas ikakaltas niya din dyan sa, ano, sa hospital bill mo. Tapos last question, may malasakit ka ba? It's a government, it's a government initiative, the one. So it really helps. It really helps a lot. Questions before I proceed to the next topic. And Jen Pabayama participants ko. Marin pa ba akong audience tito. You can uh, next. <laughs> yes, according to Sir Bo. And according to Ma'am Venus, next. Okay. Walang nagmamayin sa asano na to. So next na tayo. Yes po, Ma'am. Next, according to Dr. Edward. And listening po. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Next. Okay. So let's proceed then. Republic Act 8282, which is still under Social Security Law. The Philippines uses a progressive income tax system based on how much employees earn. As of January 1, 2023, most workers in the Philippines will see decreased income tax rates under the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or the train law. 
However, taxpayers in the highest income bracket will see an increased rate of 35% and the new income tax rates are as follows. So without telling me how much your salary is, kindly comment on our chat box your tax percentage, tax on excess. So we'll see the last column, 15%, 20%. How much is your tax excess depending on your taxable income? And without telling me, how much is it? Zero percent. Marami pala tayo. I know. Zero percent. Eh, baka medyo maraming humble dito, ha? Nag-zero percent. Wala bang nag-35 percent, John? Eight million a year. So talaga namang helpful yung train law for, for, for us all, no? Kasi nasa zero percent na. Helpful ba sa inyo yung train law? Kasi zero percent ay yung tax nyo. Yes, ma'am. According to Sir Bo. Yes, of course. Twenty percent for Dr. Edgar. Twenty <laughs> percent for Dr. Edgar. Um, expected, expected by answer, Edward. Oh, Dr. Edward. Expected, no. <laughs> yes, ma'am, from Sir uh, Mom Venus, and expecting for more from Sir Raymond Bo. More, more income, Sir Bo. <laughs> Sir Raymond. Okay. So I guess. Um, Micah Bracket, more according to Dr. Edward. More adjustment. More adjustment na dapat yung 400 and uh, up lang yung my 20%. Dapat wala na tong 15%, no? Mm. Marami tayong income tax returns. 350 is the minimum. 350 is the minimum wage for Sir Raymond Bo. Uh, dapat sana i-adjust, no? Sige. Soon lang. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for your for your participation, no? Uh, dito ko nalaman na hindi lang pala ako nag-iisa sa 0% chucks. Okay. So, we will have an activity, but before that, of course, I want you guys to refresh as well as to, you know, unwind a little bit. So, we'll take a short break. We'll take a 10-minute break. So, after that, Magkikita tayo para sa ating activity. Okay ba yan? You can say yes in our chat box if you wanna, if you guys want to go for a 10-minute break. Noted po. Okay. So we will go for a 10-minute break. And then when we get back, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much, Mom Christine and Mom Venice. So when we get back, we will go with our activity. So I will see you guys back at exactly 11 uh, 18. We'll say we'll say 11 18 for our activity and the rest of the topic. Okay? So I'll see you guys back at 11 18. We'll take a short break.
are you a medical professional, an educator, an engineer, or a professional seeking specialized training programs? Stellar Training Consultancy Services is the right training center for you. STCS issues highly government recognized certification programs that help you as a professional in your career goals. STCS ensures regulatory and statutory compliance to protect you as you skyrocket your career to the top. STCS offers various training modes such as face-to-face -face sessions, blended sessions, and virtual sessions to ensure the accessibility and availability of the training programs. All training programs offered by Stellar Training Consultancy Services are well thought and created professionally to ensure reliability and retention among participants. Stellar Training Consultancy Services bring excellence to professionals. Are you a medical professional, an educator, an engineer, or a professional seeking specialized training programs? Stellar Training Consultancy Services is the right training center for you. STCS issues highly government recognized certification programs that help you as a professional in your career goals. STCS ensures regulatory and statutory compliance to protect you as you skyrocket your career to the top. STCS offers various training modes such as face-to-face -face sessions, blended sessions, and virtual sessions to ensure the accessibility and availability of the training programs. All training programs offered by Stellar Training Consultancy Services are well thought and created professionally to ensure reliability and retention among participants. Stellar Training Consultancy Services bring excellence to professionals.
offers various training modes such as face-to-face -face sessions, blended sessions, and virtual sessions to ensure the accessibility and availability of the training programs. All training programs offered by Stellar Training Consultancy Services are well thought and created professionally to ensure reliability and retention among participants. So can you now see my screen, guys? All right. Everybody's here? So let me first hear if everybody is here and refreshed already. So how's your 10 minute break? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So the most exciting part. All right, so the most exciting part of every trainings, of every webinar, of every activity or of every gathering is an activity. So today, that's actually, sir, that's actually okay, sir, our moderator. Um, that's okay, sir. <laughs> All right. So one of the most exciting part is the activity part. So the activity that we have in this uh, morning's uh, session is a write-up. So ready your pen and paper, or if you are a keyboard warrior, then that's actually okay, because you will, you will submit your entries later using our chat box. All right. So are you all ready? Kindly type in ready if you are ready to partake in our short activity. It will take us it will take us 3 minutes and 2 hours. <laughs> Kidding. So ready. So most of the participants are now ready for the activity. So I know that this is just very easy for for you guys because you've been doing this and uh, you've been wanting to do this your entire employee employment life okay so our activities list down three unique benefits you would like your organization to offer explain why they are necessary so very simple list down three unique benefits you would like your organization or your company or, or your company to offer you and explain why these Benefits are necessary. So, masyadong, uh, masyadong easy lang yung ating activity, no? So, we actually have a total of 12 participants. So, I'm actually expecting on our chat box 12 entries as well. So, again, list down three unique benefits you would like your organization to offer and explain why these are necessary. So, I will be giving you 10 minutes to accomplish this task or this activity and after 10 minutes or before the 10 minute time and if all of you already have your entry submitted in our chat box then we can read through it okay so three unique uh, unique benefits you would like to your organization or your company to offer you your time starts now And while brainstorming on your end, earlier when we discussed or when I mentioned about a certain a bonus that a government employee will get at the end of the year, you know, um, calculating all the remaining um, funds that they have and then dividing it to the employer employees. So they actually call it CNA. I actually saw the comment just right now, just a few minutes ago from our Facebook Live that um, that it's CNA. And uh, to further uh, name that, according to Dr. Edward Paris, he's driving. That's okay, Doc. That's okay, Doc. You can share later after our discussion if you are no longer driving. <laughs> so that's okay, Doc. You can catch up. So it was CNA, no? So CNA, it's like 25,000 pesos um, or more, depending on the remaining funds, if I am not mistaken. 
So we also have a list of virtual upcoming trainings that is posted on our chat box. You can, uh, you can view and if your organization wants more trainings, you can book those trainings too. Mm. We, all, we already have Sir JM's um, entry here and I'm expecting everyone to send their entries before eight, oh no, before 11.28, but it's okay for Doc because Doc is driving. So maybe later he can, uh, you know, he can join us. So according to Sir JM, three unique benefits that he would like to have his organization offer to him is first, HMO, uh, free travel, all in. Oh, nilagyan talaga ng all in, no? All in. Pati ba naman yung side expenses, sir? Like yung mga expenses for, for, for pasalubong included. Tapos org team building consistent. Dapat consistent yung organization team building. Sabi niya. Kasi depending naman, depending naman yun sa department, no? Kapag mag team building. So HMO and free travel with family, malaking impact, refreshing, and nakakabawas ng stress while org team building nakakabuild ng team connections. Correct! Ganda! Yes, it's actually a very nice benefit no kapag, uh, kapag ini-impose yan ng ating mga companies at saka organizations. Maganda. But for HMO, sir, maybe you can you can uh, you know talk with your with, with the management about this, no? Kasi dapat naman talaga may HMO. <laughs> 25 po is the minimum amount you may receive po as per DBM guidelines in the CNA. Thank you so much, Sir Raymond Bo. Yes, minimum yung 25, no? Tapos tataas ng tataas yan. I mean, lalaki lang lalaki yan. Thank you, Sir Bo or Sir Raymond. Maximum po. Ah, I sure. Sorry. So that's maximum. Okay. So maximum. Minimum probably of 5. Maximum 25. Tapos may iba din silang nare-receive yung LGUs, no? May iba silang nare-receive. Uh, 50, I don't know, 50-45. But some do receive those amounts. Okay. All right. So, Sir JM, may, may ano si Sir JM, ang fast hands si Sir JM, tsaka may ano na talaga siya. May, may, Ini-imbak na ideas. <laughs> Maganda talaga yung free travel with family. Kasi malaking impact yan. Tapos with family, tapos isa lang yung pwedeng madala mo. Uh, and then tatlo yung anak mo. <laughs> Ika na yung sa iba, sir. <laughs> I'm actually looking at our live as well. All right, So I will give the rest the, their piece so that uh, they can you know formulate ideas uh, let me also use the, the the remaining five minutes to to give the participants peace para naman na makapag sila ng idea as to what benefits they would want their organization or their company offer them so let me
Ali right. So from Mom City, transportation allowance to less the expenses of employees. Rice allowance, same as my recent at Transpo. Oh, yes. Um, transportation allowance, um, I guess this will also be de minimis. Um, included na to sa matataksan. But yes, that is to lessen the expenses of employees from, you know, um, when we talk about transportation. Kasi sa panahon ngayon, nagmamahala na din yung gasolina. <laughs> rice allowance, same as my reason sa transfer. Oh yes, masyadong helpful ito, yung rice allowance. Um, like at least 2,000 pesos per month, no? Um, malaking, mal malaking bagay na to. Another answer, flexible working hours. Um, flexible working hours um, that can also be managed depending on your organization. So um, there are actually a lot of um, benefits of that. For example, uh, let me just give you an example. A solo parent um, can actually get. They have these provisions under the solo parent act for uh, flexible working hours. Um, but I know that it will it will not apply to all because um, there is this. Um, provision that will only apply for solo parents, but at least meron. Um, if yeah, and if necessary for um for let's say yung new bagong mga mama, bagong mothers, they can they can probably have that one requested. All expense vacation, paid health and wellness bonus. Same with Sir J M earlier. All expense uh, paid vacation. This is really a lot. No, ang daming gusto ng um, may ganitong benefits. Which is really, really great. Akala ko kasi ako lang yung gustong may all-expense paid vacation. <laughs> Marami pala. Health and wellness bonus. Yes. Kahit man lang no 2,000 pesos per month for gym allowance. Gym allowance. <laughs> and then we have from Christy and family or he family health insurance, healthcare insurance. Um, Kasi yes, may ibang HMO na yung coverage sa company is yung employee lang. For the extended um, family members, you have to pay for the full price. So at least man lang no, at, at least half man lang ng ano ng ng insurance babayar ng employee employee and then sa employer yung half for the immediate family members. All expense vacation paid, same with the uh, mom and then transportation allowance also from Mom Christine. May, may HMO na po kasi kami at group life insurance. Oh, that's a nice. That's nice, Mom City, HMO. Sa kanyang sa group insurance, group life insurance, your immediate family is included. And that's really nice. That's really nice. There are some companies that uh, really is very generous to their employees. So I guess everybody, or if not everybody, I, I know that you all have your ideas. And uh, I know that you all have your ideas and that you wanted to share scholarship for career and personal growth with pay. Oh, yes, Sir Raymond. Uh, some companies do offer scholarships um, with probably online learnings and all that. So there are other organizations that provide those scholarships in terms of um, certificates. So for growth, and that's going to be with pay. So example for scholarship on um, you know international schools, maybe you can work um, out with that one with your organization because there are some organizations that has this type of a program wherein they can give up to 87% discount when you uh, study or like when you when you enroll in a certain uh, master's degree. We actually have that one in our organization, 87% of uh, discount. Um, we partnered with a school outside Philippines for that one. So that's actually a great, that's also a great benefit for, for employees. No, Because not all the time, but we have to stay on a particular post. So it's really important. Career growth is really very important also. So I guess um, uh, we, we have here more than enough participation from our participants providing their answers with the activity. So let's proceed with the next topic. Okay. So for our next topic, it's going to be designing Philippines, uh, Philippines Employee Benefits Plan. If ever you have ideas and suggestions later, you still can use our chat box. So designing Philippines uh, Philippines employee benefits plans. So why do we need to create employee benefits plan? Why? Because designing your benefits plan can feel like a challenge when you're operating in an unfamiliar area. 
Your goal is to find a balance between your company's resources and your employees' needs and expectations. Kasi naman hindi porket gusto natin ng mga, ng mga benefits na yan, agad-agad pwede natin ibigay. We have to take into consideration also the company's resources. Because if ever um, we have to really give in to our employees' demands, mama jojo jeopardize naman yung company. Kasi we have to consider also the resources, the ROIs, yung mga ganyan. So that's why we have to create a plan. We have to create a very feasible and very applicable plan for things like this. With research and preparation, you can create the benefits plan that supports your success. So yeah, of course, you have to, um, you have to look into both sides of the coin so that um, okay naman sa benefits, pero yung company, palubog na. So um, dapat win-win situation both will benefit the company as well as the employee. What is the average cost of the benefits? So my average cost siya. Businesses offer different benefits based on their industry, size, and location. So with so many factors affecting the scope of a company's benefits, plans, there is not an average price you can use to gauge your own planning. So creating a budget based on your unique revenue and expenses is the best way to manage costs. So, dapat pala talaga we have to consider yung um, business din natin. If ever maliit lang siya, of course, yung mga benefits natin, um, depende din yun. Of course, when you are working in a large company, in a huge company, and in a rich company, you may have the opportunity to demand benefits, to demand bonuses to demand um, incentives. So we have to consider the, the, uh, the company, the stability of the company as well, and if it's huge or not. So, yun. Advantage of having a unique employee benefit. Benefits plans are valuable to your growing company in a few ways. They can make your open positions stand out in the labor market, encouraging job seekers to apply and your benefits can also improve morale and retention rates within the workplace, helping you build your business farther. So why is it unique and why is it uh, beneficial? Because it's been stated that when you have this type of benefits, it will entice job seekers. It will entice applicants to join your company. And of course, when there are people that's more than willing to join your company because of, the, of these benefits, in the event, though, this will also cause growth in your company. So the more applicants that you have, the more chance that you will grow as a company. Top benefits of employees of value by AI HR learning. So let me show you this video, and I hope that you will get something out from this video, and later on, might as well share your takeaways. Hi, in this bite, I will share with you a top four employee benefits that will teach you how to attract new talent and retain existing talent in your organization. If you don't currently offer these incentives to your staff, you may want to consider them. Stay tuned. What benefits does your company offer its employees? This question tends to pop up in a lot of job interviews. Often, right after the interviewer asks, do you have any questions for me? And employee benefits are a fair thing to inquire about, since most of us would like to know the perks that a job will give us before we agree to sign on with a new employer. It's important then to know what benefits employees value most. So what are the top four benefits employees are interested in? One, flexible hours. In a recent fractal survey, 88% of respondents said they'd give some or heavy considerations to a job offering more flexible hours. If you currently require workers to be in the office for a set period of time every day, stop to consider whether it is truly necessary. For example, you may have one employee who prefers to work from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. so that he can pick up his kids from school in the afternoon, and another who likes to sleep in and be at her desk from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. If they can both meet deadlines, then what's the harm in letting them set their own hours? This can make things substantially easier for employees and encourage them to stick around. Two. 
the opportunity to work from home. Obviously, this may not be a practical idea for every business. If the kind of work that you need your employees to complete requires special equipment, confidential information, or face-to-face -face interactions, then it may be unfeasible to perform tasks remotely. But if an employee's job can be done from their home computer, then maybe they should be given the option to work this way. Being able to work from home is the kind of perk that people often brag about their job offering. According to Forbes, 45% of at-home workers love their job, but only 24% of in-office workers expressed a similar sentiment. So having this employee benefit on the table may raise a substantial amount of interest in your company. Three, vacation time. Far too many business owners fail to provide vacation vacation days, even unpaid time off to their employees. Some businesses that do allow employees to take vacations often avoid discussing it with new hires and or pressure long-time employees to not take time off unless it's absolutely necessary. This is usually a bad idea. Folks who aren't given time off are more prone to burnout, and they may also feel unappreciated or taken advantage of. On the other hand, granting employees vacation time, especially paid vacation time, reassures them that you see them as human beings with lives and interests outside of the office. It's a sign that you take their mental health and well-being seriously. Four, paid parental leave. Any parent will tell you that caring for a newborn baby can be stressful and exhausting, but it's also expensive, which is why many new parents who don't receive paid leave from their jobs often wind up returning to work much sooner than they'd like. Though they know that they won't be fired for taking time off, they simply can't afford to lose their income for several weeks or months. In an online survey of 1,000 employees in America with access to work benefits, half of the respondents prefer more parental leave time over a pay rise at work. Laws concerning paid parental leave vary from country to country, but if it is at all possible for you to offer employees more than the absolute minimum, then it might be wise to do so. Giving you parents additional time to bond with their babies without having to worry so much about finances sends a very clear message to prospective hires. Your company cares about its employees and their families. That's it for today's Bite in which you've learned how to optimize employee experience by integrating a top four employee benefits into your organizational practices. Stay up to date with our Learning Bites by subscribing to our channels. And if you like this video, make sure you like and share it. And I'll see you soon in our next Learning Bite. All right, so basically, the top benefits from this video, we actually mentioned two from our previous activity, right? One of which is the flexible work hours and vacation time. So it's been discussed that that's actually part of the top four benefits that the employees wanted to have. So um, uh, I haven't thought about, um, you know, opportunity working from home, but there are actually a lot of people or a lot of um, employees really wanted to be considered, uh, considered working from home. You know, uh, the pandemic time, there are a lot of employees given the opportunity to work from home, but also some businesses have to consider, like what the, he had mentioned earlier in the video, that for work from home setup, it depends upon the organization because there are some data, there are some um, information that needs to be confidential and not to be shared. So you all, you also have to understand that. You know, it depends upon, you know, you can you can uh, you can have an agreement with your management. So next we have your steps in creating employee benefits plan. So there are actually steps on how to create an employee benefits plan. So while creating your employee benefits plan, put in mind that there are labor regulations and pertinent laws about compensation and benefits so from there, you can find references to make the foundation of your employee benefits plan. So the following are the steps you can take in creating your employee benefits plan, but depending upon on you and what are your most you know, comfortable uh, steps in creating that. But these are here, our guidelines. We have assess your resources and goals. Of course, that should be the first. Study the labor market and then design your benefits plan. So before going on designing your benefits plan, you have to make sure that you have uh, that you take considerations with your resources as well as your goal. So simply because you have this goal, you have to jeopardize your resources. No, you have to think it um, more seriously. You have to think it like, you know, if I will give this, will I jeopardize this? And if will the business go on? Will the business will still be running after a few years? 
after giving this type of benefit to my employees? So like that. Study the labor market because there are labor laws that might might, might apply on a certain organization, but not uh, that will not but will not apply on other organizations. So you have to take into consideration also the labor market and also the laws. And then after that, you can design your benefits plan in accordance with everything that's above. Steps in creating employee benefits plan, like what, what I have made mentioned. First, you have your assess your resources and goals. Spending more on benefits than your company can afford will hinder your growth. So I mentioned earlier that you have to not you have you should not jeopardize your company's resources just so you can give what your employees want. So look into potential revenues and existing expenses to set a budget for your benefits spending. So you have to really study. You have to do a, um, a case study when it comes to creating a employee benefits plan. So second, we have your study the labor market. You can only compete with other companies as well. You have to check the competitions. You know, if your competitions within your area has this type of benefit, then of course, you also have to be competitive. But like what we have mentioned at the earlier part that we also have to take into consideration the resources. Now, if the other companies in your area doesn't have this much benefits and yours still stand out, then what's the use of creating more benefits like that? So next we have your design your benefits plan. With everything you've learned about your company, workers, and the labor market, you can create now a very feasible and workable um, benefits plan. So allocate your benefits funds to required provisions first and use the remaining money on priority French benefits you discovered in your research. So that's the time you can create a very feasible and meaning, meaningful employee benefits plan. So after studying everything. So example of a benefits plan, here you go. So identify the benefit you will be giving to your employee. For example, health insurance. Now indicate what includes your benefit and the definition. So your health insurance should include healthcare plan and then medex, dental, and vision. So some insurances, though, may include um, dental, medical, and dental. But on the example here, it does have vision. So other HMOs don't have that. Other HMOs don't handle, like, for example, free eyeglasses, free eyewears. So you have to consider that one as well, if it's needed or not. Um, probably in BPOs, no. Um, it's it's nice to have this benefit of vision that includes vision, that includes our um, that includes eyes because facing and computers. Provider, you have to identify your provider or partner in providing the benefits. You have to you have to talk. You have to check. Uh, probably you have you will do a a an auction, what you call that, not bidding for the, um, you know, proposed uh, partners, bidding for, uh, bidding in, in identifying a provider or healthcare provider. And of course, in the details, you have to provide details such as policy or eligibility for benefit, like policy highlights, you know, for when creating this type of plan. Of course, indicate benefit arrangement for the contribution or share, employee cost. For example, 80% employer funded and then 20% for employee funded. So that should matter. Annual cost, that should in indicate the benefit or amount or threshold. So that should indicate, that should be indicated in your benefits plan. And then afterwards, you can identify how important this benefit would be for the employee by maybe asking surveys. Expected take up or a number of people who took up the survey and value for participating employees. If this is valuable for them. They may rate five stars for it. If health insurance is, is uh, beneficial for the employee, then of course they have to rate it five. So this is an example employee benefits plan. No, it should consider, or you should consider this, um, these columns here, benefit definition, provider details, employee costs, annual cost, expected take-up, and value for participating employee. All of this should be, should be included in your benefits employee plan. So employee benefits required by law. 
before you consider fringe benefits for your employees, you need to meet the provisions required in the labor laws. These requirements include public holidays off. So of course, there are also companies or organizations that doesn't honor holidays off, public holidays off. Most of them are those that are in private organizations. Paid annual leave. So paid annual leave, um, that should also be considered. Social security con uh, contributions, holiday bonuses, education opportunities. So as what um, as what was mentioned earlier, um, on the when I ask you for what benefits you would like your organization or company offer you, so we have your education opportunities and then meal subsidies. You know this this is very nice. Employee benefits required law. meal subsidies. So it's by law. So you have to okay. So next, some suggested employee fringe benefits. So there are also suggested employee benefits. Fringe benefits are the provisions you offer outside of the requirements of the labor laws will set your company apart from the competition. Potential offerings includes housing allowance. Oh, that's actually great. Transportation stipends, allowance for health care, holiday bonuses, education opportunities, and meal subsidies. So when we talk about housing allowance here, this will really stand you out if you are a company offering this type of benefit. Because not all companies will see how important it is that you will give allowances to your employees when it comes to housing. Not all of your employees own a house. Not all your employees are living with relatives. So some of them are renting. So maybe a portion of it will actually help your employees a lot. Agree? For those who suggested earlier housing allowance, do you agree with that one? Because not all, you know, owns a house. Some of us are actually just renting. Some of us are probably just living with our relatives and parents and wanted to somehow separate. But how can we if we have already outstanding expenses on our own? So housing allowance is really um, is really a nice idea for a benefit for the company, for, for a benefit that a company can provide. So transportation stipends. Some companies do have transportation allowance already, but some also had that one removed because it's already incorporated with their basic pay. But, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to have transportation allowances. May it be not to be used uh, in commuting, transporting, but also with, uh, if our employees have their own cars, that's also helpful. Allowance for healthcare. Aside from the HMO that we have, aside from the uh, health providers' um, inclusions on that particular plan. But it's also nice to have other allowances for healthcare. Like for example, emergency cases, you know that when um, one of our children is, um, is uh, hospitalized and it's, it's uh, you know, thing bits moments. So it's really important. Holiday bonuses, and this one here is another type of incentive that you may, your company may actually get. Education opportunities, like what I have made mention earlier. It might not be important now, but in the future it will be. But there are some companies that do offer um, education, educational support. It may not be the entire amount, but at least. Meal subsidies, that's also important. Rice allowance, um, meal allowance, that's also nice. If all of these benefits, the, um, and it will be realized from the companies that you are working with, your company will set its standard and will set it apart from others. It may, it may, you know, it may give them a unique impression. Oh, I want to go. I, I want to join Stellar because Stellar is giving me this type of benefits and all other benefits. So what do you think could be improved with your organization's current benefits package? I know that you have your current organization's benefits package. What do you think could be improved with your organization? I would like to ask at least um, three to five entries from the group here to share with us what could be improved with your organization's current benefits. Maybe the ones who haven't submitted their activities can share. Um, I would like to ask for the next four minutes, for the next uh, four minutes of your um, suggestions or what could be improved from your current organization's benefit package. 
So let us hear from you guys. Let me hear from you what you want your organization, um, what improvements you would like to have your organization, your current organization's current benefits package. So we'll talk, uh, we'll talk about your current benefits package and not the ideal package we wanted to. Okay, so uh, uh, probably for me, in my personal opinion, and for my personal organization's um, experience, it might be the HMO. It should also consider the vision, the one that we had earlier now that we saw with the presentation. Vision, it should always be included. Like at least we partnered with an optical that will offer us like 50% discount on, on services for vision. <laughs> because I myself need that because my vision is not 100% perfect it's not 2020 so i need to have it checked i need to have spectacles as well as contact lenses from time to time okay so from your end there give at least three examples that your organization may improve when it comes to your benefits package come on share with us your suggestions don't be shy more coverage and benefits more live privileges and more psychosocial training workshops Oh, that's actually great, Sir Romel. That's nice. Yes, more psychosocial training workshops. Will it be? Uh, will it be including these types of webinars? <laughs> Maybe topics like this or topics outside your um your areas, no? So psychosocial training workshops. That's actually great. So you can suggest that to your company to hire Stellar for more trainings and workshops. <laughs> Other other suggestions for your organization. <laughs> Thank you, Sasha Ro uh, Romel, for that input. Training and our seminars. Ah, I like that. I like the trainings and seminars. Go Stellar, <laughs> biannual eye checkups and mental health program. Yes, you're actually correct, Sir JM. Mm, you can suggest with your organization right now. Um, you can put in your suggestion box because I know that every organization has this. More trainings and our se uh, seminars from Stellar Training Consultancy Services. We want more trainings from them. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sir JM. <laughs> All right. So huh? automatic, our, our moderator. Uh, see? Please fill the short form with information needed so we can compute and give you your computation. <laughs> All right. So, yes, you can suggest. <laughs> and you can also give this one to your organization. Why not? Thank you so much, Paul. You're welcome, Sir JM. So, why not, no? Recommend and ask your organization. From those that are listening also out there, you can ask more trainings and webinars like this. Two hours per day is not, uh, will not, your, your two hours a day will not be wasted. You know, learning something new for your mental health growth. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, according to Mom Josta. Okay, so I guess everybody already participated and thank you so much. It's time for us to turn our cameras on for our photo opportunity. So kindly turn your cameras on now so that we can take a group picture. A, a remembrance in today's discussion. So turn on your cameras, please. I want to see again your beautiful faces. And aside from that, we are also live streaming you guys on Facebook. So you can have this one reviewed and check on your beautiful faces. Ang ganda ni Ma'am Siti. And Ma'am Christine too. Mm. At ang guwapo-guwapo naman ng ating mga participants today. Hi, Ma'am Moni Monina. Oh, see? Our participants are very handsome and very beautiful. So let's take this opportunity to, to have our beautiful faces broadcasted worldwide. So where are the others? No campo. Sorry. Oh, from Mam Narisa. I will miss your beautiful face, Mam Narisa. But don't worry. Probably we'll have another set of training. No come then po from Mam Irene. Let's have a formal photo. No come then from um, Venice. Okay. All right. So let's have a formal photo later and then a, a wacky post um, afterwards. Okay. 
So for those who have the opportunity to turn their cameras on, please do so, so that we can have our formal photo and then afterwards our wacky pose. Okay, so how about Sir JM? So we have here, um, all right, so how about the others? So we'll start taking your pictures and capturing your beautiful faces in about a minute. So for those who are still grooming, then you can start. You can start grooming yourself for a minute. Hindi naman, hindi naman, um, so um, we'll start, we'll start capturing your beautiful faces in a few, so stand by, okay? So for those who are actually in my phone right now, stand by, I'll take the call later. <laughs> okay, so I guess everyone is ready to take our um, photo. All right, are you ready? Okay. Is our moderator ready? Ready, our moderator is ready. Okay, so in three, two, one, serious pose. Awesome. Now let's do the walk your face. Let's do the walk your face. Okay. In three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your participation. And I hope that you got takeaways in today's discussion and we'll probably apply that one in the future in your organization. So certificates um, uh, in today's webinar will be forwarded shortly by our training uh, department people from our moderator. So thank you very much for your time, guys. May you all have a great rest of the day. Enjoy, be safe, and goodbye. Thank you also, Mom Christine. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, from Sir JM. Thank you, everyone. See you all again in our next training. Don't forget to recommend Stellar Training Services and Consultancy. Um, training Consultancy Services to your people. Goodbye. <laughs>